switching on us, we may end up with no music. Kelly, even the mic isn't working. Yeah, something happened. Hey, here come some chairs. Oh yeah, that's working. Do you want me to go in and play and just open up the doors? And yeah. I can get the music to work. It's the wireless. Welcome. This is our annual thank offering service from the women. The women of our church put this together, and they do the work. They do the readings. And um, if you would please look at the inside cover of your bulletin. It talks about the thank offering service. It's over 100 years old. This ministry has been a ministry of Nina Kratzitz for years. And uh, this year we gave her a break to let her recuperate a little bit, but she's going to do a reading for our prayer for us today. And I want you all to give her a nice virtual pat on the back because uh, this is truly her program. Also in your bulletin is your thank offering envelope for you ladies and a yellow sheet. Today is an especially important date in the ELCA church. 50 years ago today, our first woman pastor was ordained. Cars, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, she's got her fingers on. Okay. <laughs> that has to be Deborah Wanamaker. <laughs> Fifty years ago today, Elizabeth Platts became the first woman ordained to the ministry of Word and Sacrament in what was known as the American Lutheran Church. She's from the Pittsburgh area. She uh, was a campus chaplain, and that just opened the doors for many more women to become ordained. And on the back of this, it has a list of women's names in our synod that are ordained. So this is a very special day for us. Okay. I'm ready. Christ be our light and you're going to notice in the prayers that part of that song is the response to each prayer it's kind of cool All right. 
poor Terry wasn't used to us being outside and forgot to put the hymns in the bulletin. So Kelly ran in to copy one of the hymns for us. But let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. 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 Stand near her with your mouth so it goes into the water. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gracious gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters of creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son, Jesus, has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Flow to baptize with Christ and may your daughters and sons no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You'd think we hadn't done this before. Singing for Joy is the song, if you happen to know it. And I'm going to come and remind you of your baptism.
Spirit. Amen. God of justice and love, you light our way through life, and with the words of your Son, give us the light we need, and awaken us to the needs of others, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Here she comes. Do you have your readings? today is from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. The offering of justice, kindness, humility. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you, and what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. But with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. But what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
second reading is from 1 Corinthians, 1 chapter, verses 18 to 31. Christ crucified the wisdom and power of God. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of the world? But since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that it is written, let the one who boast, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I put you on the spot and I can't do it. Our gospel today is the Beatitudes as we find them in St. Matthew. And I'm going to do this a little differently, guys, as I read the gospel lesson I'm going to give you your sermon. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak. Reverend Richard Fairchild from British Columbia in Canada tells the story of a rabbi of, of, in the Ukraine who used to tell people that he had discovered the meaning of love from a drunken peasant. The rabbi was visiting the owner of a tavern in a Polish countryside, and as he walked in, he saw two pe peasants at a table. Both were gloriously in their cups, arms around each other, and they were protesting how much they loved each other. Suddenly, Ivan says to Peter, Peter? Tell me what hurts me. Peter says, I don't know. How can I tell you what hurt you? Ivan's answer was swift. If you don't know what hurts me, how can you say you love me? The Beatitudes challenge our way of thinking and challenge the way we live daily life. The goals of our faith are spiritual not material. We're called to emphasize with and help people who are outcast and hurting. The Beatitudes call us to seek goals and that we often put aside and ignore to help people we barely relate to, don't want to be around, and maybe don't even like. As we examine and attempt to learn from the teachings of Jesus, we discover that love is actually seeking out and helping what Jesus refers to in the 25th chapter of Matthew as the least of these. Blessed 
are the poor in spirit, or, well, can't turn the page. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the essential workers who put their lives on line every day for us, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the people who man the suicide telephone lines. Blessed are the firefighters, paramedics, and those working endlessly to create a vaccine for this pandemic, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the funeral directors, hospital chaplains, hospice workers, and families who have lost loved ones during this year, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the immigrants in America who have loved ones overseas, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the people living in nursing homes, isolated in their homes, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the pastors who feel lost during this time and disconnected to their congregation, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who do not have food, jobs, medical insurance, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who fight for justice for their family, no matter the color of their skin, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are all those helping to feed the hungry this Thanksgiving, those who offer forgiveness and compassion, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the judges, attorneys, counselors that work with all walks of life, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are those who do God's will without an agenda. Teachers for all grades, whether it be public school, private school, college. Nurses, aides, caregivers, for they will see God. Blessed are you who pray for one another, for you will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the mothers and fathers who are desperate to teach their children remotely and do their jobs at home, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those serving in the military. Blessed are the police bridge builders, for they are called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, and for theirs it will be the kingdom of God. Blessed are the people who work for the government especially those who work the polls and who are involved in recounts, who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they're persecuted, the prophets who were before you. Blessed are those who make decisions regarding face masks, travels, and shutdowns, for people will revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. But rejoice and be glad, for you are the ones protecting those who refuse to protect themselves and others. Blessed are all of you for your fight for justice, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, praying for one another, volunteering at polling stations, wearing your masks, teaching children, serve our country, work in the medical field, support your pastor and each other, welcome strangers in our midst and care for those in need. God our Father has blessed each and every one of you, has forgiven our sins because of his son Jesus Christ and gives us the company of the Holy Spirit to guide us on our way in the kingdom of God. May you take time this week to be thankful. Be safe and healthy and enjoy one another, whether it's in person or remotely on a Zoom call. Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. 
We thank you most of all for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to follow him, to be wise and compassionate, and bold enough to follow not only the letter of your law, but to obey the Spirit as well. To seek goals consistent with your will for our lives. To help those in need and to always be able to see, not only through the eyes of convention, but with the eyes of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That reminds me when I was doing my sermon for seminary. Diamond was like two or three, and she wouldn't let me do my sermon by myself. So I'm holding her here like this, and she's running her hands through my hair the whole time I'm doing a sermon. So that kind of reminded me of that a little bit. By the way, I passed that sermon. <laughs> oh, you made copies. Good, 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 good. Is it to be your presence to wear that school? No, when the poor ones.
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Before Janine starts the prayers, I want you to notice your response. It's part of Christ's life our way. We won't sing it, but we will speak it. Together in spirit and spirits embrace, let us pray for the renewal of the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. We pray, Holy God, for the unity of the church universal. Draw your people together into one great company of disciples, together following our teacher Jesus Christ to carry out his holy mission, together sharing the good news of, of your justice and the love wherever we are sent. Christ be the light. Shine in your church gathered today. Amen. omnipotent God for the well-being of creation. We give you thanks for transforming the chaotic waters of creation into the saving waters that nourish and sustain all the earth. Renew us every day by your water and your word. Christ be our light. Shine in your church and gather today. Pray, righteous God, for peace and justice in the world. Lead the nations of the world away from the stony wilderness of sin and toward the holy light of love, justice, and peace. Christ be our light. Shine, Shine in your church and gather today. We pray, compassionate God, for all in need, for those who hunger and thirst for peace, for belonging, for love, for righteousness, shine your light of justice for those who mourn or suffer in any way shine your light of comfort christ be our light shine, shine in your church gather today our thanksgiving eternal God for all who have died in the faith. May we know the fullness of the new life that you prepare for us in your kingdom. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gather today. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Jesus Christ. Amen. This time, ladies, if, if you have your special thank offering envelopes, you can bring them up and put them up here. Or if you just want to bring your regular offerings up and put them in, that would be fine too. Peter? Oh, never mind. Never mind. It's not too soon. Wait till Nina's done. When Women of the EOCA was formed in 1987, we committed to continue this tradition of giving in gratitude for blessings. Each year, in thousands of congregations, thank offerings are given to support the life-changing ministries of the women of the ELCA. Together, we do more than we could ever do apart. In gratitude for all God has given to us, and with hope for all that is to come, let us now give our thank offering. Thank you. 
Bad that Kelly isn't playing this because this is an absolute beast of a song to play. It, it's got two different kinds of grace notes and duplets and that. <laughs> and it's such a short song. Does it play through first? Uh, it's got a short intro. with gifts of grace and abundance, entrusting to us the ministries of women of the ELCA. Help us to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action, and promote healing and wholeness in the church, the society, and the world. Accept these gifts and our prayers that, nurtured by your word, filled with your spirit, and fed at your table, you may share with gladness all that you have shared with us until all creation is satisfied. Amen. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God you reveal your glory as the glory of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit equal in majesty undivided in splendor one Lord one God ever to be adored in your eternal glory and the night in which our Lord was betrayed he took bread gave thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for, for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Okay, guys, we made it through this far. All right, yay! I'd like for all of you to give a big hand to Nina, because, like I said, she is the founder of this service in our church. Nina, thank you, thank you so thank you. much. And I'm ready to turn the reins over to you for next year. Thank so, <laughs> that's it. One year's enough. Um, Augie had his knee replaced, had had a little bit of a snafu with it, but he's home, he's doing well. Um, Sandy, are you ready to divorce him yet? <laughs> She's not going to answer that. <laughs> he, he can be ornery sometimes, but uh, pray for quick healing so he can get out of the house. Uh, I, As you know, I sent the letter to the bishop, to all of you. He says we're outside, or at least not inside is the way you put it. Uh, until at least December 18th. We do have the symphony that's coming to play Christmas Eve. What that's going to look like, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, I'll be out here if you guys want to come out for outdoor services. I know we may have to put a, get one of those 50 gallon tubs or something <laughs> and have heat in it, but we will be here. I want to thank the Wall family today. Before you leave, you are going to have hot or cold apple cider and cookies. They are up here to take part in. This is a special Thanksgiving special to them, and they wanted to share that with us. So thank you very much, Nancy and John, or Doris and John. How can I do that? Any other? Yeah, good. Thank you. Any other announcements? Good. Oh. Yeah. Gift cards reflecting. Thank you. I have the box ready and it's sitting on my kitchen table. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are collecting gift cards to hand out to those who need some help this holiday season, whether it be Thanksgiving or Christmas. This is, we're kind of gearing toward Christmas, but if you would like to bring gift cards in, go right ahead. Make sure the receipt is attached to them in case there's any difficulty with them. But we are gathering them, and, and guys, we're getting quite a few. Thank you very much. Anything else? I hope you have a really good Thanksgiving. Be safe. Stay within your group of people that you're with all the time. Listen to what people are telling us so we can get through this, okay? <laughs> Nobody gets sick. That's an order. Okay. Our God calls us to do justice. May you find strength in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ calls us to love kindness. May you find comfort in Christ's gentleness. Amen. The Holy Spirit calls us to walk humbly with our triune God. May you always find joy in God's love and justice. Amen. Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We thank you, gracious God, for loving all your family with a mother's care and feeding us in a way our hearts and souls can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Renew and enliven us by your presence in this meal that we may be your presence in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I will now serve you with communion.
Cratchit with? He's a cleric. Okay, so. You're all crying, hon.
Hot cider's on its way, you guys! <laughs> This goes in the front door. This goes by the front door. This goes inside the door. Of course, normally it is. Yeah, and I know that they're suing the guy that did it, but I don't even know if he has the money. It could be like my father-in-law who said his car accident. They sued, but the kid that hit him, and his... Well, hey, guys, what's happening? Yeah, some hot. Nice day today. Yeah, it has to be the stuff that they have to do. Yeah, they have to do it. Policy and stuff like my father and I, the kid was in a Chevy Tahoe and passed the truck on a hill on a bend. And they were meeting head on. They just built their body. Peter, do you want help there? Will I clean off the table? Okay, well, then, guys, let's get this done. Just yeah, just lift it for that. And then the legs and the same size. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Please unlock. <laughs> do we do your other thought? Yeah, we can. Got it. Thank you. 
understand that stenosis stuff. The good, thing with, the good thing with stenosis, and I don't know, I have the names of some really good neurosurgeons, uh -huh. you know, spinal stuff, which would include the yeah. cervical. Um, stenosis and things like that, those are, from what I've been told, relatively, I don't want to say simple, minor, but it's not a major surgery. Oh, that, yes. like, that, that, like to fix a, a disc issue that's causing stenosis can be done neurologically. And make a big difference. Okay. Um, my issues were because I have scoliosis and arthritis. That the stenosis fixing that was going to do nothing for the other stuff. So it's struck like that has to be structurally. Woo! Look out, guys! Oh, there's a camera for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. But yeah, just I, if you want the names, I don't know what what Google Insurance provides. I'm all UPMC. Oh, they're really good. But it, like, is it can it be UPMC? Does it matter? And the question is, are they even going to do anything right now with? I've got surgery scheduled for my rotator cuff oh, for Jan or for December. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Well, let's hope it. The hope yeah. that that still happens. Yeah, but yeah, because at this point I'm going to lose the use of the arm as I get older. Like they said, if you don't fix this as you age, you're just you're going to lose it more. Diamond, turn the camera off. I don't know. I just moved the stand.